Out here it's still the middle of winter, but in here it's more like early spring, and it's time to start planting cool weather crops for early spring. Let's get started. When planting under one or two layers of cover, our rule of thumb is to plant three weeks earlier than we'd normally plant outside, per layer of cover being used. So if we had one layer of cover, we'd plant about three weeks earlier. And here in the hoop house and in our hinge low tunnels, where we have two layers of cover, we plant as much as six weeks earlier than we'd plant outside with no cover. If you'd like to learn more details about when we plant our crops, please see the link in the description to our planting calendar. If you live in a climate that has freezing temperatures during winter, you can also use this calendar. But I'll talk more about that later. For now, let's get started planting. First off, I'll plant sugar snap peas in this open hinge low tunnel, which has two layers of cover. Then as space allows, I'll plant some of these kale, collard, and lettuce plants. Assuming the ground is thawed and you don't have a lot of snow on the ground, you can plant peas as early as five weeks before your last frost date. Applying our three weeks earlier per layer of cover rule, I've got two layers of cover here. That means I can plant sugar snap peas here 11 weeks before our last frost. It's actually a little less than nine weeks before our last frost, so now's a great time to plant sugar snap peas. I'll be planting these peas in two rows along the north side of the bed and the west side of the bed. I'll be planting them three inches apart, which is the square foot garden spacing. These plants grow to be about six or seven feet tall, so when the time comes, I'll remove the cover and I'll add trellises for them to climb. I plant the peas about an inch deep, and these plants you see here, they're kind of in the way. What we'll do to, to make sure they don't shade out or crowd out the peas is we'll harvest them pretty aggressively in the coming weeks to make room for the peas. Normally I'd apply compost or vermicompost to the soil surface after planting, but at the moment we're running a little bit low on vermicompost and I want to save it for a potting mix. And our compost is still frozen, so what I'll do is I'll come back later after our compost has thawed and I'll apply some to the soil, just to the top. And that's all we'll do uh, as far as soil amendments for this bed. We should start harvesting these peas in May, and we'll succession plant more peas next month for a slightly later harvest. Those peas will also be under cover. We'll remove this cover probably in early April. By then the plants will be climbing, probably enough to put in the trellises for them to climb. Of course, after planting the peas, I cover them with soil thoroughly and pat down the soil a bit to make sure that they're covered and in contact with the soil. Okay, I'm done planting peas. Now let's see if I can find some space to plant some of these kale, lettuce, and collard plants. These plants were started in the grow room last month and have been hardening off outside in the hoop house for the last couple of weeks. Let's start by planting some lettuce. All of these greens could be transplanted out without cover about four weeks before the last frost. Again, assuming the ground is thawed and there's not a lot of snow on the ground, you also want to check your forecast. But with two layers of cover, I can plant out ten weeks before the last frost. It's currently nine weeks, so now is a great time to plant. probably won't be watering today because the soil is still quite moist. Even though this is covered, we've had a lot of rain and all our snow recently melted and the soil has wicked up a lot of that moisture. So what I'm doing today is planting these wherever I can find a little bit of space. I plant them much closer than recommended on seed packets. And this works well at this time of the year because growth is pretty slow and this gives us more production per square foot. And when growth starts picking up, we can keep the plants from getting too crowded simply by harvesting leaves and sometimes harvesting entire plants. We have a lot more of these greens in the grow room and we'll be planting them out as the sun gets higher in the sky and more areas of our garden are getting full sun. Right now, a lot of it's still totally shaded so it wouldn't make any sense to plant there quite yet.
One of the advantages of planting out kale and collards this early is that we won't have any cabbage butterflies in the garden until late April or May. So these plants will have a lot of time to get big, strong, and healthy before they're an issue. And they should be more resistant to pests as a result. Okay, I think I planted as many greens as I can without getting too carried away. Next I'll plant carrots in this hinge low tunnel. Now it may look like we have a lot more space to plant in this bed, but actually there are a lot of perennials in here as well as self-sown annuals that are just starting to come up. So there isn't that much space. So what I'll do today is plant some carrots just in this little area right here. Today I'm planting short and sweet carrots. We like to grow these small varieties because they do well here in our shaded garden. And at this time of the year it makes sense to grow a small variety because they grow to maturity more quickly. These can be harvested after 68 days typically, though at this time of the year it'll take a little bit longer than that. Carrots can be planted out three weeks before your last frost date if you're not using cover. But here with two layers of cover I can plant them out nine weeks before the last frost date. It's currently just under nine weeks for us, so now is a perfect time to plant carrots under double cover. And I follow the square foot garden spacing of 16 carrots per square foot. It's kind of hard to do with these tiny little seeds. I may overplant a bit, but that's fine. We can always thin them out by eating carrots when they're small. I don't thin them out earlier than that. I wait until they're, the roots are large enough to eat and then I thin them out. So I create these tiny little furrows in the soil and what I'll do after I plant is I'll just cover them with a little bit of soil. They don't need much because the seeds are quite small. Even though I'm not planting many carrots today, I'll be back in March and April to plant more. And again, I'm waiting for more parts of the garden to be in full sun. And when that happens, I can plant in those areas as well. But right now, the south side of the garden is, th the south third of the garden is in total shade still. Okay, that's the last of the carrots that I'll plant today. Now let's head into the hoop house to plant onions and leeks, which can both be started about 10 weeks before the last frost under double cover. So today I'm planting New York Early Onions and Musselberg Leeks in the seed tray and cells. And then in early spring, I'll transplant them to the front yard garden. As always, I'm using my standard seed starting mix of five parts cocoa coir, four parts perlite or vermiculite, and three parts vermicompost from our worm bins. I'll plant the onions and the leeks about an eighth to a quarter inch deep. Like I said, they'll stay in the cells here under cover. I'll put them in one of the cold frames until early spring, at which point they'll go out to the front yard garden to grow until they're ready to harvest. Well, my camera is running out of battery life, so I better tell you about the planting calendar tool I mentioned earlier. Rather than describing exactly how to use it here, I'll provide a link in the description plus detailed instructions on how to use the calendar. You can use it as long as you live in a climate that has freezing temperatures during the winter. Okay, I've finished planting our onions and leeks and they're safely tucked away in one of our cold frames. Now today's video is obviously showing you what I'm up to in the garden and it's very oriented toward season extension. I'm also thinking about doing detailed how-tos on how to grow a variety of crops. And these will be more geared towards beginners. If that's something you're interested in, please let me know in a comment and also let me know what crops you'd like to see me cover. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos on how to grow a lot of food on little land without spending much or working harder than you have to.